enactment statute or order. See, uh, of course, oh, sorry, we don't have any sheriffs. Get a notary. Sorry, we don't have a clerk. Get a notary. We need a judge. Get a notary. They can do just about anything that, is, that anyone else can do under those acts. One of the things that, essentially, they're a court officer. They will attest for you, and what you are going to do is you're going to go through the process, the administrative process, that leads to court. And you're going to do it in such a way that the other party has no standing, so by the time you get to court, you're the only one there. Here's my judgment. Sign it. It's done. An administrative judgment will not be turned over because it has nothing to do with the facts. It has nothing to do with the law, and it has everything to do with the proper lawful steps necessary in order to get to a place of adjudication. The way we deal with it, first of all, if let's say Gary over there owes me money. I go to him, I say, Gary, you owe me money. Here's my bill, buddy. He can either reject it, he can say, no, I'm not touching that, or he can take it and say, yeah, I've got your bill, I've accepted it, but now I refuse to pay. Either way, he's, dis he's, he's dishonored my bill. A notary public, in order to use a notary public, and you will use them for a bill of exchange, I'll use it for the bill of exchange example, you can also use them for a notice of understanding and intent, you can use them for a claim of right. I, send a, I go to Larry or Gary and I say, Gary owes me money. I go to a notary public, you want to be notary public? I go to my buddy, Notary Public, say, Notary Public, Gary owes me money, that rat bastard, he's not paying me. Here's my bill, I want you to hold on to my original. He'll hold on to my original, and he will create, he'll make a certified true copy of that bill, and he'll make a notice. He will send this to Gary, say, look, buddy, I'm holding on to a bill, it's one of your bills, at least Rob says it is. You've got three days to come and pick it up. Now, actually, he's going to get ten. He's going to get three days for the mail to go out, three days to decide what to do, three days for his response to come back. You're going to have a Sunday in there. Essentially, you got ten days grace. If, within that ten-day period, Gary doesn't come to my buddy uh, notary public and say, give me that bill, here's the money, make sure Rob gets it, now he's in dishonor. The notary public is going to craft a document called the Notice of Dishonor. He's going to send me the original of that, and he's going to send a copy to Gary. Saying, Gary, you're in dishonor. Here's your notice. Again, he's got the period of grace, the three days grace. If he shows up to the notary, oh, sorry, bad mistake on my part. Here, let me pay. It's done. If he doesn't at that point, now you're, at, you're in protest. You craft a notice of protest. You take it to the notary public. He stamps it, sends off the certified true copy to Gary, and Gary now has ten more days. If at that point I don't find remedy, Gary doesn't show up, I've sent off the, the bill of exchange, he received a notice, he received a notice of dishonor, he's received a notice of protest, and he doesn't pay, I've won. Game over. All I've got to do is take my notarial package to any JP, any judge, and say, look, this is what happened, and the notary is the officer of the court. He's the guy who is attesting to the fact that this process, you've gone through it properly, and your opponent didn't even want to play, you win. They'll give you an order. You say, Sheriff, come with me. I'm going to see some property here. Do, 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 do. Are we having fun yet? I'm having fun. <laughs> student loans. Who here has a student loan? Oh, that's what you're here for. <laughs> student loan. Believe it or not, folks. And you'll find it in the bursting bubbles there. We have free education. Everyone has free education. You can access it at any time. Canada is a signatory to a covenant. came into force in 1976. They acknowledge post-secondary education is a right. It's necessary for the development of a free and just society. It would be made equally accessible to all, and in particular, with the progressive introduction of free education. When you look in any of the Canada Student Loan Acts, you will find a section where they deal with deduction and set-off. Deduction is the difference between deduction. Let's say a notary here owes me ten bucks and I owe him ten bucks. We can just say, okay, you deduct your ten bucks, I deduct mine, we zero it out, we're done. We're zeroed out. A set-off is kind of like a deduction, except there's no real actual debt. It's just a claim of a debt. See, he, I definitely owe him ten dollars, and he then claims, okay, well, then maybe you owe me ten dollars. You can claim and not have any actual debt. Merely claiming will be, be your set-off. Since Canada has no money, 
We have no money in circulation. It's all promissory notes. It's all fiat currency. It's not money. The government cannot put you in a situation where A, they've taken away the money, and then B, they put you in debt. The only way to get out of debt is to pay off with money. If you can't pay that off, you're a debtor. You're in uh, permanent servitude, essentially, uh, an indentured servitude. You're just a step above a slave, and that's unlawful. They gave you remedy. The remedy is in the form of the fact that because there is no money in circulation, you can point to the number on the back of your birth certificate at any time and say, here, pay this off. And that is the process with the paying off the student loans. You send them one letter. You say, hey, look, I heard this crazy guy talking about this number on the back of a birth certificate, and I got 20 simple questions. Answer these questions, and if you don't, you agree I get to answer them for you. Write them off that letter. They're swimming in these letters right now. They don't like me too much. When they don't answer, you send them off another letter, say, hey, I gave you an opportunity to answer these questions, and you didn't want to, so now I'm going to do that for you. Here's the answers to my questions. Now, based upon that, because of my answers, I now have a belief. I now have an understanding. And based upon that understanding, I'm going to craft a document called a claim of right. We're in a common law jurisdiction. We can establish any right we want by claiming that that right exists. I can claim the right to poke you right in the eye. If I give you notice of this claim and you don't do anything, and then I poke you in the eye, you got no complaint. None. If, however, I say I'm going to poke you in the eye and you say, no, you're not, that might hurt me. Now I don't have that claim. You are going to claim that you have the right to seize your bond revenue to pay off the debt demanded from you by the government. I mean, in one hand, they've got your money. They're taking your money. They're sending it from the federal representative to the provincial representative. They're doing it every year. This is your money. You're going to take a little bit out of that, put it on your student loan, zero out your student loan. Your province, going or what's uh, what's the guy's Campbell. name? Campbell. yeah. He's going to get less money that year. He's oh. not going to like it too much. Yeah, the other 78 of them. Yep, they all get less money. But the thing is, although your province might get less money that year, it's coming out of your infrastructure, your education, your hospitals. You're a member of your own society. You're no longer in debt. It all equals out anyways when you look at it from a big enough perspective, except this time it's balancing in your favor instead of your representatives. We are working very hard on that. People are sending off the, uh, the documents, and I just got an email about four days ago from a guy who's gone through the process, done his claim of right, and now whenever he goes and he's trying to find out what's happening, he's getting a big runaround. We had one guy very close to doing it, and then someone put some fear into him, and he was worried about, you know, lifetime of audit and whatnot. I don't see why not you're doing